Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan goody Kantz, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are several members of the Needham High School robotics teams, and uh, it's just great to, to have them join me, and also uh, their coach and mentor, math teacher at the high school, Hans Batra. I want to welcome uh, today Joe DeLisi, Liz Barrett, Patrick Feeney, Sarah McLaughlin, Julia Redston, and Thomas Lively. Thank you for being here and uh, for bringing your, your friends along with you as well. Um, I, robotics is something that has really caught the attention of the community, and I thought, Hans, maybe we could begin by explaining what exactly is the, uh, are the Needham High School robotics teams. And thank you for having us here today. Um, the robotics teams um, is really a, one club that was formed you know, many years ago to just promote students' interest in science and technology as a way to have a, f a fun way to learn about um, electrical, mechanical design. And, um, and this club has sort of grown over the years. Um, and, and we've evolved to the point where we now have a girls' team and a boys' team. And the, the, um, the girls' team came about because over the years, over the 10 years or so we've been doing this, we had very few girls involved in the team. And another mentor, uh, Peter Mesnick, and I at one of our competitions thought, well, what is the way, how can we get more girls involved? And um, we came up with the idea, well, why don't we just try an all-girls team? And that, that came about two years ago. Uh, we discussed that two years ago, and last year was the first year we had a, a girls-only team in addition to the boys' team. And that has been a huge success. We've had 15 girls um, each year f from um, on the team when in the past we would have none. And so that is, at the same time, the boys' team has grown as well to, to 30 members um, you know, from, from way back when, from just a few. So it's been a, it's been a tremendous growth over the years. Yeah, very, very popular. And, uh, you know, here's some of the, you know, the, the key players. Uh, so, for, you know, 40, 45 students involved in, in uh, robotics. And my understanding is that the robotics team, one of the key cha challenges, key uh, tasks, is to uh, compete with other teams in the First Tech Challenge. So, um, Thomas, why don't you kind of What's the First Tech Challenge? What's that all? What is that all about? Sure. So the First Tech Challenge, um, it's a big global robotics uh, challenge. Um, teams from uh, many different companies, uh, countries, uh, come together um, in uh, small local tournaments, and then uh, bigger tournaments, and then finally the World Championships, and they uh, build robots uh, for the school year and then in December, January, February they uh, compete and the way the competitions work is that it's really uh, co-opetition. So it's, it's cooperation and competition. Cooperation. That's right. Okay. So uh, your partner team in one match okay. may be your opponent in the next match um, and it's all about uh, sort of helping out all the teams because you know, helping the other teams will help you in the end, um, and it just makes it a lot of fun for everyone. As I've watched some of the competitions in, in the past, uh, there's a lot of learning and exchanging of ideas between the teams, which is what you don't typically see in a, in a typical competition where people are holding on to their, uh, their plays, if you will. Right. Um, so, uh, Liz, what, who are some of the competitors? I mean, what are some of the local teams we're, we're competing against? Well, most of the high schools around here have robotics teams, so we've actually become very familiar with a lot of them over the past two years because we generally go to the same regional tournaments, so we sort of have friends on their teams and we keep up with them. We were talking a little bit before that we have a scrimmage coming up, but then there is a regional uh, competition. Joe, what, tell me, what does that look like? What, what, uh, what, what's ahead, really, for the, for the team? Well, for the boys' team, we have not yet qualified for the state tournament, so we still have to you know, go to those local-level tournaments and try to qualify for March 1st. The girls' team is already qualified, so their next step is the state tournament on March, March 1st. And if they do well enough there, then they move on to the Super Regional Tournament, I think in Pennsylvania. And then if they, again, do well, then they'll move on to the World Tournament. I don't know where that is, though. St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah. 
So, so up to now, we, um, we actually, Needham High School, we hosted a scrimmage here in December, and so that was, that was the first step, and that was a great time because the students got to test out their ideas in a, in a low-key setting, see, see how the robots were working, see what the competition was like, and then um, both teams had time to go back and modify their designs, and in fact, the boys, um, over Christmas break, they um, took apart the whole robot, except for one piece, and put it back together after you know lengthy discussion of what worked and what didn't work. And that's really what's wonderful about this, the FTC competition, because there's more than one opportunity. So you um, learn from what worked, what didn't work, and then they come back together and make up, come up with new designs and come up with with you know even better robot and they did a really nice job because the robot could score every single possible point in the competition and then um, that was all getting ready for the first official qualifier which was in January uh, beginning of January so we attended that at Lexington um, last week or the, the 11th right and and so there's a couple other qualifiers coming up as well that that hopefully the boys team will be able to get into so the girls team did qualify at that competition for states so they're all set for the state competition, but they of course have new ideas from both those competitions that they've been in of how to improve their robot to get it ready to compete at the you know at higher level. So, Sarah, um, what what what's in front of me? What uh, we have two robots here. We have the we have the boys and the and the girls team. You you designed you put these together. Um, how what was your involvement in in that? Um, this this is the. This is the boys. boys. This is the boys, and that's the girls. Okay. Um, I've done a little bit of building. It's mostly been um, unscrewing stuff and helping when there's not a lot of people around. To my main role is in programming robots. So different different stu team members have different roles. So you're into programming, and is somebody else into design? Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. very big into the hardware of the robot. Um, so that means what? So that means basically I take the parts and I think of the best ways to put it together to achieve a task. Um, so either we think of an idea at first, like in our heads, and we assemble it with, um, like the, there's a standard kit of parts called Tetrix, which is basically um, sort, of like, sort of like an erector set in Lego, and we're allowed to use actually any Lego part at all on the robot. So it's a mix of like Lego and this Tetrix stuff, and also there's some things called commercial off-the-shelf assemblies, uh, which are stuff like linear drawer slides, as you can see on the front of the robot, and um, some like turntables and stuff. Oh, so this is uh, from, a, from a desk drawer in, in a way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So we're allowed to use some of those parts. And um, so either we think about these ideas in our head and we manually just like put the parts together, or um, what we have started using is um, software called PTC Creo, which allows us to 3D model the robot and like assemble these Tetrix parts on the computer, and that can give us like a give us like a lesson, like a plan as to how we want to put this thing together. I'm going to have you pause for one second. PTC Creo is the software yeah. that is developed by PTC Corporation in Needham. Yes, that's true. So, and I and just as an aside, maybe this is maybe this is kind of a commercial break. I don't know, but <laughs> PTC Corporation of Needham is a huge supporter of the Needham Public Schools and really a, a strong uh, supporter and, and even mentor of, of uh, Needham High School Robotics. So we, we want to give a shout out to them. And, yeah. and along with, we have, ser we have other community partners as well. Who are some of our other community partners? Uh, Versed Engineering, uh, also here in Needham. Uh, the Needham High School Student Council uh, gave us money. Olin College gives us a lot of help. Um, uh, There's a new class. corporate sponsor in, in town. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, Warner Brothers Turbine. Turbine, uh, that's right. Yep, big game company here yeah. in Needham, yeah. so that's pretty cool. Well, it's great to have those community partners uh, help support the, the design, as yeah. you're suggesting. So there's the, you're, the hardware, and Sarah, you're involved in the program. So once they build it, you're thinking about how the, the software can interact with the mechanical pieces so it can move and, and do what it needs to do. Yeah, and then we also asked the builders just to build a small little test robot so that before the big robot's completed so that we can work on programming and figure out the best way to do things. Julia, what are the other roles of team members? Um, Groups mainly break down into software and hardware, but there has to be a lot of work between the two because if the robot's not built in a way that the software can work with it, then it's 
can't be used at all. Um, we also we have a few PR teams because there's a, a lot of PR public relations. Like and what we, do they do? We do a lot of outreach as a club. Um, being part of FDC involves a lot more than just building a robot. We meet with a lot of other groups, a lot of other companies. For example, a girls team brought in some Girl Scouts and we let them play with our robot and talk to them about our team. We do a lot of trips out to other companies. We visited Turbine. So yeah, now, how was that visit? Did you all get to go to Turbine? Yes. Yeah. So what 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 was the what, Joe? What was the visit to Turbine like? Uh, basically, what do they do at Turbine? Uh, they program a lot of really really sweet games. So right. their current <laughs> sweet games, yeah, right? really sweet games. <laughs> their current game that they're programming is Infinite Crisis. And that's Sounds it. like my job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually all got uh, copies of the game. We went there. Basically, they showed us how they work, you know. We got to ask some questions about, you know, the industry and what it's like to, you know, interact with all the other companies building games. And I would imagine some of these interactions with these engineers, I mean, they have engineers at Turbine and PTC and all that, do they give you ideas and, and you know, kind of inspire, like, oh, we, we should think about that? With Turbine, we were actually lucky enough that several of the people who worked there decided to come and mentor our teams, so they show up to our meetings a lot and provide support. Excellent. Well, that is a, that that is a really cool partnership between the Needham community and its its students and and that interaction and I I would imagine if I understand how those folks at PTC and Turbine and Olin College work that they're learning just as much from you as you are gaining from them. Have you seen any of that? Uh, I think they've definitely been having a really good time mentoring us and um, I think. We definitely uh, impress each other with uh, the ideas we come up with. Um, it's a lot of fun for everyone, so I think so. It, it, tell me about uh, um, just briefly your, any interactions with Olin College. What is that? What's that look like? Well, with Olin College, we were lucky enough that um, there was a female professor who brought a few of her students who were also girls, and they came and specifically mentored our team, which was really lovely because our mentors are all really lovely people, but there aren't a lot of female ones. So to have sort of like a female presence to look up to is just really nice. I, I want to. I just. I want to pause for a second and, and and talk about that. So so a few years ago, um, uh, Hans, there 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 was the robotics team, and it was primarily boys, maybe just boys, and, you know, one or two brave young women participated. They would come for a couple of weeks and then disappear. And <laughs> so now this team focused on just girls, all of a sudden there's this, this group, like, where, where do these girls come from? How, how, did, how did you, how I did... I think the interest has always been there. Um, just starting a new team that was all girls seemed much more inviting to a lot of people. I now walking into a room that's just all boys. That's going to be all that's in the club, and being the only girl there can be can be hard. Um, and a lot of women are discouraged from robotics, anyways. So to have that extra challenge is a bit hard. So I think having the invitation of an all girls team was really exciting for a lot of people. The other really nice thing about it is that we all started on the same page. I think one of the most daunting things about joining the boys team was that they already knew how to build a robot. So if you didn't, that was an extra challenge to overcome, whereas we all started at the same time, so we had the same learning curve. So there was a lot more support, I think, in that. Now, um, I was uh, recently at WPI for the first, one of the first LEGO League tournaments um, on a Saturday several weeks ago. I forget exactly when it was. And there are several teams kind of mushrooming through Needham of first LEGO Leagues. I imagine you've interacted with some of those, the little guys. And, and do you mentor them? Do you, do you let them come and see what you're doing? What, is that, what does that look like, Sarah? Well, um, my, well, I haven't really done that. I haven't been able to mentor an FL team because I actually was on the FL <coughs> last year. So what I remember um, interacting with the Needham High School Club was going to the library and watching them demonstrate stuff. Okay, so okay. Fun. So Needham has probably 10 FLL teams that are you know, oh, yeah. inter independently yeah. run that parents do yep. in their basements. And yep. um, one of the things that the team did last year was uh, we had an FLL night where um, parents could come in and uh, find out about the program and find other students that were interested in forming teams. And 
they um, they, sh they showed off the robots to show what w what happens down the road, and so we'll probably do that again in the spring to try to get um, you know new FLL teams formed, and you know that that's been growing all in, in Needham and all around the area. And it's a great way to get more kids started um, early, you know, learning about it and getting excited about about technology. I talk about uh, robotics enough around the house that a few years ago, my little brother started a new FLL team with his friends. So that was, that was and pretty cool. And where? Right? At which, uh, which, which school or which neighbors did they he? just, it wasn't affiliated with yeah. like any particular institution. They just got together and did it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, you are, you are, you know, huge role models for those little guys. And I, I have to tell you, one of the things I think folks who, it would be great. I know folks can go online to see some videos of some of the tournaments and some of the work that you've done because I think that's been posted and I would encourage folks to be able to do it. The tournaments themselves are actually quite lively and noisy and pretty pretty crazy. I mean I, I think people might think well you know you got a you got a couple engineering types you know working on the robots and it's quiet and serious. That is not at all what these tournaments are like. I mean these are it's like Mardi Gras, yeah. right? <laughs> right? I mean, is that part of the, the, you know, the fun of it, or is that, you know, well, it's kind of a sideshow, or? I was really surprised at the first tournament I went to yeah. and how fun it was. <laughs> when, when Dean came and came up with this, this program, um, the first robotics, his idea was trying to make a, um, a robotics or a technology of event for students, but which has the same excitement as a sporting match, a sporting event. And by having two teams compete against two teams and then rotating so you're always mixed and matched with different people, different teams. It makes it very exciting and you know I remember at our tournament in Lexington there were some members of our team who couldn't stay and watch the last final break, tie breaking round because it was just so so intense. Um, just, just, just the so excitement. So what did they do? They, they, just they ran out of the room, they just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't watch. I won't say who but it was but it, it, it's that exciting, and, and yeah. many parents came up to me and said, this was so exciting. It's like yeah. I, I was falling off my seat. I couldn't, yeah. you know, I couldn't um, contain myself. It was, so, you know, you have to go and experience it, because you, you wouldn't think just watching the robots go around. But since there's an autonomous period where the robots operate by themselves, pre-programmed, pre and then there's the tele -op round where the students are controlling them with, with the joysticks, that combination makes it very exciting. Wait, and what part, what part I mean, Patrick, which part, the autonomous or the, what's the other one? Teleop. You, teleop. Do you, what, what do people prefer? What part do um, folks like? Because I've seen, you know, the autonomous, and you're like, oh, geez, you know, and you, but teleprompt, you might have more, what, what do you prefer? Well, um, so, the, well, they're, they're both, like, really different things. Uh, the autonomous, it's like, like, like most robots, like, they run by themselves, and so it's, sort of like you're sitting there on the edge of your seat like personally is this going to work or is it not and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and then so then you have to like watching your little brother on a bicycle for the first yeah, time yeah. after the training yeah, that's right. yeah. exactly <laughs> um, and so then so then we have the teleop period and so that is really where most of like the excitement and action is because the robots are like driving around they're going like they're stopping and they're like jerking around they're like they look like they're going to tip over sometimes and so, um, so that that's really intense. And I actually um, I drove the robot at uh, the competition this year and uh, last year, and I can tell you it's really intense. Like, I feel like my heart is like pumping, like, like really <laughs> intense. And um, and then there's actually an end game period where um, they have alternate things to score by. And so this year actually, uh, what there is, it sounds, it sounded crazy at first, but what. We ha they had us do was they had us hang our robot on a bar, and we've been able to do that actually. But it gets really intense because there's two things you can do in game. It's like spinning up a flag and hanging. So if you can get both of those, it's like it's really intense, but it pays off. <laughs> so um, when I when I think about you know you're talking about the intensity, I, I also think about okay, so we're designing this hardware and we're programming it as Sarah suggested, and we're Where's the where's the creativity? I mean, is there creativity involved in in First Tech Challenge in in, in robotics? I mean, what what's the, what's the creativity involved yeah, or the the innovation? There's what's tons of creativity that goes on uh, that gets put into these robots. At the uh, very beginning of the school year, early September, they announce what the challenge is going to be for the year, 
And right from the get-go, everybody is online talking about it, you know, turning over ideas, posting pictures, uh, drawing up diagrams. And we spend a few weeks uh, brainstorming and debating. And usually there's about, um, we break the robot into like five or so sections, you know, like how are we going to get blocks, how are we going to drive, what the whole th what's the whole thing going to look like. Um, and we usually have like ten or so ideas for each of those sections. And then... Um, we just take this wealth of creativity and we boil it down to uh, a few prototypes and again people have to be creative uh, putting stuff together with cardboard, uh, with sheet metal and then um, you know even just finding the best ways to get the Tetrix kit of parts to fit together nicely um, I'd say that takes creativity too so there's an awful lot that goes into these robots. Um, so if you think about this creativity and the innovation and the and the work you're doing, are there any does it does it help any one of you think differently about the school work you're doing, or is it completely is it completely different from not affiliated with? I mean, is there any? I mean, do you, ever, do you ever sit in a class now, whether it's a science or math or even in art class, and say, oh yeah, you know, I, this makes sense for I understand what we're trying to do with the robot or. Has that ever happened or no? It's just completely yeah. different. I mean, it's happened to me. I remember um, really like last year in physics, I enjoyed physics a lot because this is a lot like it. You got like things like levers and, and stuff like that. And also then when you got the electronics unit, um, I already knew a lot about the electronics from uh, working on robotics. And so I, I knew like everything already. So I was, I was doing really good in that class then. I was feeling real good about that. Yeah, sometimes... Uh, you know, I'm in calculus right now, and you know we'd learn, we'd just learn how to do something with with math, uh, and I'd, I'd think, oh, if only I knew that three years ago. You know, our old <laughs> robot could be so much better <laughs> if I had known how to do this calculation. Okay, so that that math actually could could come in handy yeah. with uh, with with some of this. Yeah. Um. So what I want to I want to uh, stick on that just for for a moment. What, um, uh, what, what's missing in the Needham Public Schools experience that may help your peers who are not involved in robotics or who, who, um, who are involved in robotics? Uh, are there some experiences that you wish you had in the elementary level or the middle school level or even the high school level that would have increased your interest or now that uh, you know, you've been involved in it for a couple of years, I think. Julie, you've been involved for a couple of years yeah. now. I mean, if you, do you ever think, geez, I wish I could have done this a long time ago if only I had done... Yeah, I mean, I had never heard of any of the robotics, FLL, FTC, before I joined the high school. Um, there's a lot of exciting things. I think a lot of really great changes are being made to get more people interested that I wish had been there when I first started. I think the Needham Public Schools does a very good job, though, because I always took those after-school programs growing up. Actually, Thomas and I took most of them together, <laughs> and they were really good experiences. I think they sort of laid the foundation for this, and there's a new robotics class at Needham High this year that was a great thing that's been added. Like, if I could go back four years, I'd probably take it. <laughs> and So and I think it's a really good Now, thing. were any one of you, you know, Sarah, you may have been. Did you take the engineering and design class at Pollard? Yes, that's... Um so you're probably the are you the only one? Oh, we had engineering recent, when we were there. Was yeah. it, you had engineering and design as well there. So that was, that a good was class. I mean, another class to to uh, begin thing. So this for the robotics class. None of you is involved in the robotics class right now that I understand. But what's the robotics class all about? It's a new class this year. It's a new class, basically to to learn similar things as they're doing in the club, but it gives a chance for students who may not have time for the club to do do the same type of stuff. We're using similar hardware. And you know, try to learn a bit of a little bit about programming, a little bit about mechanical design, engineering design, the engineering process, and you know, there's they have this this course at Pollard, but there's not there was nothing really at the high school for them to to continue with, and so this is one step toward that, um, where <coughs> students that are interested in engineering have have a have an opportunity to do that. And how many uh, how many students are enrolled? Well, it's a it's a semester course, and so we have um, all together seventeen this this semester, and probably about seventeen next semester. That's great. 
Great. So that's so, brand new, and that yeah. will will uh, will likely grow. And that, of course, was possible by the NEF providing funding for um, for the material for that. And well, I was just going to ask. The NEF has provided funding. That's another partner we've kind of. Right. I want to mention them. Give a shout out to the Needham <laughs> Education Foundation because they are pretty fabulous people. Um, uh, do you feel there's support for what you're doing at Needham High School? I mean, are people like, oh, yeah, the robotics team? I mean, is there people excited about, supportive of what you're doing? Yeah. Joe, yeah. is there you? Yeah, no, I think people are very, very supportive. And with the introduction, with the, in sorry, with the uh, introduction of the course, I think it, robotics is really starting to get its name out there, and people are starting to take it more seriously. Yeah, more like from club down to class. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the NEF also, um, help the club out because this year we have a, a new 3D printer which the students use to model parts. So they designed it in the PTC's Creo software, printed the parts. Now they didn't end up actually using any of those parts on the final robots, but those are part of the early prototypes in the, as we we're discussing different ideas of how to solve the different um, tasks they had to do. Well, it's part of the problem solving and not everything's going to work. You know, you try something and that didn't right. work, but you're going to try something else. I mean, what you're doing, that learning of trying and failing and, and succeeding is just, I mean, it's a life lesson and it's, it's powerful. Um, just real quickly, because I know we have to wrap up here. Uh, we have, we, I'm just thinking about this, we have four, four seniors here who are moving on. Um, what's in your future, uh, real quickly, about what you might want to study? Thomas. I will be going into computer science. Computer science. And Joe? Engineering. I don't know what. Engineering, something oh. like. Julia? General engineering also. Wow. And uh, Liz, what about you? Probably mechanical engineering. Wow, that's really, yeah. That's pretty fabulous. And is that a new, I mean, you just got involved in robotics. Is that a new thinking that you want to involve? You always wanted to do that. Um, I always knew I wanted to do something in math and science, but I think being in robotics has definitely helped solidify that that was something I really wanted to continue. That's great. Well, it, it's fabulous, and I'm just very excited. And, and, you know, this begins with someone like Mr. Batra, who's a leader, and says, you know what, there's a need. We have talented students. Let's make something happen, because that's really why robotics and, and First Tech Challenges happened. Um, so it's pretty powerful. I think about, when I think about all of you, I think about you have the science and math skills, but you have this creativity and innovation, which is probably more important. Um, and a new word I learned today, cooperation. <laughs> so that's very cool. And uh, well, I wish you well as you move forward to the regionals and uh, to our seniors as you think about the future. Sarah, you're going to be you're going to be here for a while, really taking on a leadership role. So uh, congratulations for your good your good work and good luck as the uh, season continues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.